Oz Crow Imports brings you the finest taste of Croatian beer, spirits and wine. Let your taste buds feel the years of nurtured produce and years of experience in producing some of the best beer and wines from Croatia. Established over 10 years ago and importing various wine, spirits and beers from Croatia, we stock the following products. Posječko Pivo, Staro Češko and Velebitsko beers, all naturally crafted brews. We carry a wide range of shortcut spirits, which is renowned for top quality and has won numerous awards for its traditionally produced spirits. Some of these include Šljiva, Viljamovka, Kajsije, Višnja, Orahovac and Medovača. We also have wines ranging from the Ilok region in Slavonia, Belje wines from the Danube region, Malvasia from Istra and the Palichnic brand Plavac Mali and Poship wines from the Dalmatian coast. Our mission is simple, to ensure that quality, unique and reasonably priced Croatian goods can be enjoyed right here in Australia. We also cater for special gift packs for customers, be they birthdays, christenings, weddings, etc. It's easy to order online or you can telephone us to arrange a special package. Visit our website at www.ozcrow.com.au, like our Facebook page Ozcrow Imports, or you can contact us by calling 0419 or email sales at ozcrow.com.au. Good evening and a very warm welcome to you all. How are you? Uh, welcome to episode seven of the, of the Oz Crow Soccer Show. My name is Taunchi Prusats and alongside me, as he's every week, Josip Gilich, Josip Air. Very good, warm, a warm welcome to you. It's, it's very humid down here in Victoria and um, up in Queensland, no doubt very wet. How are you? It would would help if I um uh, uh, unmuted you. That would that no. would make make sense. Once again, take two. How are Thank you, mate? You. How's things? And welcome to the episode seven of the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Thanks, mate. Uh, yes, uh, I'm 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 thankful that uh, we were largely unimpacted here where I'm residing. Uh, but yeah, a, a huge five days of uh, constant downpour. I've never seen so much rain uh, in my in my life, in my <laughs> own eyes. So, um, and actually had a little bit of an incident on the road where I hit a pothole due to um, just not seeing it through a little bit of road surface water. So, uh, yeah. yeah um, but really, uh, my heart and thoughts and prayers are out for those who are impacted quite severely, particularly in these later scenes we're seeing in Lismore in New South Wales. Yeah, we're closer to home, I guess. Um, to our Croatian community, we'll be we'll be talking about some of the clubs up in Queensland, some of the soccer clubs that have been impacted. A um, lot to talk about tonight's show, um, mate. Before we do get into tonight's show, we are a soccer program. We talk about football, but we also are a bit of a Croatian community program. And mate, you had um, well, a little bit of brush with the rich and famous. I don't know about the fa rich bit, but the famous bit. Uh, uh, Gold Coast Knights had a very, very special visitor just the other day. Tell us a little bit a bit, bit about um, the visit of uh, a rather um, high-ranking dignitary, I guess. Yeah, no, none other than the uh, former first ever female president of Croatia, first and, first and former, uh, Kolinda Grabar-Kitarovic. Uh, there's me sort of poking around at the background there with my cousin Vjek Pujic. Uh, I I call that the the table of the big hitters. We had you know, <laughs> damage Damian Bresic, Jozo Radosh. We had Mario, your cousin there, Mario. Mario Volaric, his his cousins there, yeah. With his beautiful wife Mary. Um, Mary um, led the prayer for us for lunch, which is nice. Thank you very much, Mary. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it was nice to share the table with with the crew here at Gold Coast Knights, and I was privileged to be amongst it. So thank you very much to Adrian and the crew for putting that on. Great to see you. Yeah, Kolinda Grabar-Kitarovic was in Australia 
Um, and she, I do believe, was it in Sydney? If I'm not mistaken, or might have been Canberra. There was actually a um, a women, a Croatian women's yes. luncheon forum. Yeah, uh, the ambassador Betty Pavlic put that on, and uh, yeah, it was um, well received. And I believe I've seen I've seen photos and what you're not so uh, be be sure to get the Croatian press the um the Movina Hrvatski Vjesnik uh, um this week because I'm sure there'll be fit, quite a fair bit of a reportage as they say um but uh, yeah Mariana Rudan um from formerly of SBS and uh, of the of the famous Rudan footballing family was the uh, MC so um. Yeah. It was great to see there, and uh, didn't realize how tall she is. Like, um, you know, she, when I saw, she her, is, uh, I've actually saw had some photos I've worked there. alongside her at North Geelong's 50th anniversary, yep. and um, a, a, a ultimate professional, really, really nice person to work with. And what was uh, what was Mariana like? <laughs> You're the ultimate professional. <laughs> had you there, had you uh, there. Yeah, good one, good one. Really Thanks, mate. Nah. mate, you're going to step away from the camera for a very, very short time. We're going to get straight. In fact, we'll go straight there. We've got lots and lots of yeah, um, we've got news got to, to get into. Get and, uh, we're, Over we're to you, try, mate. We're going to try and uh, get as much news out there. We might be able to cover it all because we've got some um, fantastic guests to join us from our host club tonight, Strathmore Split, and also our former soccer Ivan Franic. But without further ado, uh, look, our, our, as I said a little bit earlier, our, our thoughts and prayers are with the Queensland and Northern New South Wales communities. We saw through the week uh, the devastation that the floods have caused, um, particularly around the Brisbane low-lying suburbs and through the um, the Lockyer Valley and the, the, and the like and Grantham. But there's some image there on the screen where uh, the Brisbane Community Croatian Community Centre and the, and the soccer fields around there totally inundated with water. Um, it, it's sad to see this is the second time in 10 or 11 years now that that's happened to them. Um, as you can see by that circled area, that's right up there on the second level. Um, I'd, I'd hate to think what what's going to be facing them in a couple of days when that totally res, um, subsides and they get to see the damage in there. Um, yeah, so alongside of that, you also had Gold Coast Knights, uh, not as impacted, but uh, the fields were totally uh, inundated with water and um, looking more like um, Albert Park Lake for those in Victoria um, than it did like a soccer field. There was, uh, wherever you looked from, from, from one corner to the other, all you could see was water. Uh, I was there yesterday, as I said, um, the water had subsided at Gold Coast Nights, but you do, you can't see the, the residue and filth from, from the gutters and um, from the creek beds that climb up. As you can look at that image there, you can see it's right up to the fence line where the, those seats are normally three tiers. So you can just imagine how um, how high that water was there. Uh, so I know the crew's uh, getting busy tomorrow to try and remove any damaged materials and, and rubbish that's floating around the grounds and trying to assess what sort of, if any, kind of bacteria or bacterial damage is on the grass so that the players can, um, can get out there again. But uh, I, I think it'll be at least another two to three weeks before we see some activity again in the MPL and even in the local competition here because there's not many clubs, um, as we know, when, when, there's a, when there's sporting fields or school grounds done, whatever reason it is, town planners, they always put them in mm. flood-prone flood areas. So, um, yeah, look, um, I guess when it comes to town planning, that you, you probably don't need to consider those sorts. You should consider those things a lot better than what they currently are planned for. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to um, actual football um, football news. Um, let's go down south um, into yep. New South Wales. And first of all, um, Newcastle, Croatia have been uh, yeah. quite busy. They've been very busy, right? And uh, every now and again throughout the week, I'll get a little pop-up on my phone from from one Karl Zivkovic or even um, Josh Popescu, the head coach there. And they got themselves a good result. Uh, Nelson Bay play two divisions above where Newcastle Croatia is going to be. Mm -hmm. They got themselves a tall draw with the first. And the new signing, McGuinness, put a couple away as, as expected. So he's doing his business and paying the rent. And then the, res the reserve grade went down 4-1. But uh, no, no, that, that's a work in progress because uh, everything everything's built in, in one, one bucket load at a time. So um, well done to the crew and the results they're getting. But I do understand that they were warmly received by the new Nelson Bay Croatians. Uh, as I mentioned last week, they got that little um, uh, butcher area. So uh, they were well received there. And if, I, if I'm led to believe correctly, they were able to put their hands in their pockets and uh, help support the club in terms of sponsorship too. So well done to uh, our Port Stephens uh, Croatians at Nelson Bay and supporting the, 
the local boys in, in Newcastle. Uh, another little bit of news is coming our way, and we'll keep our eyes across the media releases as we... Uh, there was a little release, so a little sneaky release that I heard the Newcastle Herald had hunted down Josh Popescu and Luke, uh, okay. as, as well as uh, Dennis Marincic for yeah. some insight. Uh, when you're drawing the attention of the mainstream media, Tonch, you're either doing something really horrible or really good. And, and I look, believe this. <laughs> and, Yossi, and Yossi, but you know yourself, like um, um, the smaller towns or the regional towns often are able to get um, maybe a little bit more uh, coverage in the mainstream press than maybe in the in the bigger cities. Um, it, it, there is a lot more of a community feel with a lot of the media, a lot yeah, of the mainstream definitely. media, and Newcastle's yeah. probably very much like that. And look, Newcastle is 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 a hotbed of soccer, of football. Call it what you it want is. to call it's, it. It's a football. Um, it's a football it place. It's a football so town. It is absolutely. Well, so I spent three years there, and I can tell you. Um, you know, you mentioned AFL, but you you may as well speak another language. It's, this doesn't come into play, right? Mm -hmm. NRL, yes, fair enough. Rugby union, maybe a little bit, but it's it's essentially rugby league and football, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving along now, we're going to, um, um, to Canberra as well. So there's yeah. a little bit of stuff happening in Canberra. In fact, quite a fair bit of uh, stuff happening in Canberra. Yeah, but, uh, uh, this week they had their uh, had a visit from the MPL New South Wales outfit, Blacktown, and then we know Blacktown they're uh, they're a hard unit. They're always up there in that, in that top four or five teams, pushing for um, for the challenge of championship, and they uh, they did go down the first team two one. Uh, so it, it's a bit of a test of where they where they're at in this point in time, Canberra Croatia. Um, but good to see that the, the result was close and that they were they can head into their season around the corner. I think it's uh, another two weeks away. So, um, well, in fact, it's actually yeah. this weekend because this weekend. they've got, a, yeah, they've got the is. charity shield starting this weekend. Uh, yeah. Gungala Noble, there they take on West Canberra Wanderers. Uh, so that's that's I guess the unofficial, well, no, 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 it's actually the official, the official start to the season. Yep. The league obviously kicks off the following week, but uh, and the, uh, and that's going to be a belter, right? You got your you got your neighbours, yeah. kind of kind of nights there for a bit of a local derby, and hopefully the community come out in great numbers and support that kickoff. Yeah, and that's in two weeks' time. So huge, huge happen, huge stuff happening there. Now, before we do move away from Queensland and New South Wales, Gold Coast Knights, who we had on on episode two, I think, of our show, um, um, they've got it. Their podcast, their club podcast, back as of this week. Um, uh, was this it just before our show? In Tonch? fact, it, well, I was. I was going to say it's, it's just um, kicked off. I think at seven o'clock, whatever. So it has finished now. So everyone's now tuned into anybody our program. But uh, you can listen to it on Spotify podcast. It's on YouTube as well. So if you have missed it, obviously you can uh, tune into some of I'll these other. I'll throw this in, Tonch. Yeah. If you're interested in the discussion around the current condition of A League, the mm -hmm. prospective in introduction of B League, get to that point. Get to that point in the show. Listen to the whole show. But when you get to that point in the show, listen to the critical analysis and discussion that Adrian puts on the table with Mark and Jimmy. It is insightful, and it really pricks your ears up. I encourage everyone to have a listen to it. Awesome. There is a, there's, a, there's a good reason tonight after we finished here to uh, tune in and watch that um, or watch it or listen to it however you like. That's the, uh, uh, the, um, the, the uh, nightlife, it's called. The night, oh, well, not, I like the name of it, actually. Hey. Let's, let's move Thanks. down to uh, Victoria now, mate. Yes, right. Yeah. Uh, we, look, we know we're going to catch up with Strathmore shortly and discuss mm -hmm. all things split, but uh, we can't go past uh, the NPL Victoria results that have occurred on the uh, the past weekend. Unfortunately, Melbourne Knights had their uh, um, ho first home match and went down with a 3-0 loss, unfortunately, a red card to Semakula to make that just even a little bit more disappointing to end the evening on. Um, after having such a massive win on round one and to cop that uh, in the jaw on round two, Let's hope for this Friday night in the big derby against South Melbourne away at Lakeside that they can pick themselves up and um, give it right to them. Yeah, on a brighter note, um, St Albans Dynamo, I guess, uh, coming up against Dandenong City and wasn't a brighter note for, for Dandenong City. Hey, Duke, but the no. big Croatian derby, St Albans, a thriller, um, pretty much a last gasp effort. But Look, um, I, Dynamo... I think uh, it, was, it was going for a deserved draw. In yep. my opinion, um, to get that one late on, fair enough, probably pressing a little bit harder in those final uh, crunching minutes. Uh, but if I see Mickey C's shoes, I'd be utterly gutted about what, oh, yeah. what, what happened in the last two minutes. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you go on the um, Dandenong City Facebook page um, yeah, and, and their social media um, platforms, if you haven't already, yeah, there's a very, very short post-match um, uh, interview, I guess, with Mickey Cholina. He's not a happy man at all. But uh, uh, getting back to that ladder, after round two, there we've got St. Albans uh, Dinamo, who are undefeated, one win, one draw. They're sitting in fifth spot. The Knights... Um, well, one win, one loss, one massive win and one massive loss, I guess. So they're on three points um, in sixth uh, uh, sixth position, correct? Uh, Dandenong City, unfortunately, at almost at the foot of the ladder in equal bottom um, position. But uh, uh, Heidelberg United, gee, um, they've started really poorly. And um, tonight we've got one Heidelberg player, current Heidelberg player, who's going to be joining us, ex Socceroo. Um, and former Melbourne Knights and St. Albans legend, Ivan Franic. He'll be joining us a little later on the show as our very, very special guest after our Club in Focus segment with um, Strathmore Split. But, uh, yeah, he's a part of Heidelberg United this this uh, this year. It will be interesting to see why has Heidelberg started so poorly. But uh, as far as the Croatian teams are concerned, and indeed... The original derby, mate. Geez, at all. Yeah. Every time this comes around, you'll see. But you just the old, the old what's memories. The, the what's old... the first thing that pops in your head when you when you think oh. about Knights v, v South Melbourne? What is it? You the know very what? first thing. The the Viduka uh, triumph, yes. the hat trick, yeah. the three two over yeah. over Hellas. And uh, Uima, what's that, you see, you know, eh. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I ended up that night. I think I ended up about a hundred meters from the original seat where I sat. I looked around and I was absolutely lost. I had no idea where I was because I was so so um, euphoric, so delirious. It was uh, it was insane. It was just an insane sort of a. Yeah. Uh, and, that but uh yeah moving along now what else is making news uh it must, be, it must have been derby in the air because uh even in geelong they had the, their own derby with at the junior level mm -hmm. um in the mpl juniors and you know uh, congratulations to everyone in the coaching staff from all the way through right even from the seniors right through to the juniors so begsy adrian bait adrian chagall yosip joey uh colin uh, all the names are starting to escape. Nima, uh, Felipe, Ante, Stasi, the lot of you. Well done. Look at that clean sweep. Look at that clean sweep, mate. That's just fantastic, right? I mean, you can do it against your local neighbours. I guess you just walk away really, really happy and satisfied, and you you know you're on the right track. That's The boys are doing wonderful. They're all in the top half of their ladders in their preliminary games. We know that by round 11, they'll get positioned whether they stay in the top tiers, middle, or, or, or the third tier. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. Every, all teams are doing really well and they're getting the right results and, and all sitting, like I said, in the top half of their respective ladders. Absolutely. Um, good to see some of the young talent coming up through the ranks. Uh, we're, we're, we're going all down along the eastern um, seaboard and now we're, we're moving out west. But uh, before we get out to west uh, Western Australia, we've got South Australia to come. Um yep. Look, Adelaide Croatia is having a bit of a topsy turvy time at the moment. I think they're mm -hmm. just trying to find their feet in and what life is like in State League One uh, and resettle again. They had the draw to kick off the year and they've went away to West Adelaide Hellas and went down four um, two. From what I understand, it wasn't a game where you, you could say that the four two reflects what the situation was. They've had a couple of debutants come into the into the team as well who have come through the junior ranks, which is delightful. Right? And that's what clubs want to see. But I think Phil Stubbins uh, will steer that ship in the right right direction and they'll start to settle and get the right results. And they're taking on Adelaide Hills Hawks this week. Um, mm -hmm. So they'll be ba back at home and their fortress is Jeff's Cross and they'll, they'll get the result there this week. Yeah, there we go. Uh, round three versus, uh, so that's this Friday night, 7.30 p.m., be sure to get out there. It's going to be a great game, that one. Um, and then the reserves game and the under-18 is going to be held the day later. Um, and that's going to be on the Saturday. Um, and finally, last but certainly not least, moving um, across the border even further west to Western Australia, um, what, was, what is happening over in WA? So Western Knights got themselves into the semifinals of the State League Night Cup, the preseason Night Cup. So they they won on penalties over Forestville four three, and this week uh, have the chance to take out the take the semifinal away from Olympic Kingsway, and that match is on uh, Friday night again at uh, Crazy Domain Stadium. 
So all the best to everyone at Western Knights. A uh, special call out to my old mate, Alan Petsitich. Uh, I know that you'll be out there cheering the boys on and getting them over the line. Um, but in other news, uh, aside from the football, uh, they had their tribute night to Bill and Orch. Look at that. that we love to see the community out getting their celebration on. And they're, they're probably celebrating because Mark McGowan finally said that people can come into Western Australia. <laughs> but... <laughs> possibly. <laughs> but possibly that. But look at that. You know, they've taken that tribute night for Hey Look Split to heart over there and they really put on a good show. So from all reports and a couple of other images that I saw through social media in the week was these massive platters of food and cakes. So real proper Croatian shindig, you know, bit of fish there, bit of food. So well done to everyone for hosting that and looks like you got right in the thick of it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as you can see, folks, we're wearing new kits today or new uniforms today. Yep, Sports sports Portal La Jaya are our new um, sponsors, um, new apparel sponsors for, for at least the next five weeks. So a big thank you to uh, to Asmer from uh, 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 Sports Portal, um, looking absolutely resplendent. Don't they feel fantastic? Um, so we do fa thank Sports Portal and Lejaya for yeah. coming on board. And um, how, how lucky are we? We are so we've super been, lucky. We've been really looked after. Thanks, Asmer, Sofian, and to Ralph as well for reaching out to me, because I can make this announcement nationally Let's tonight. We've got to put massive you break. on. We've we got to put you there. We go. Give you the massive center breaking stage. news. Yours truly is joining the Sports Portal Army. <laughs> yes, thanks to thanks to Asmet and the team. They've uh, given me the opportunity to uh, become a representative for the Queensland and Northern New South Wales areas. So for all the clubs that uh, might get news of, and wind of that, um, I'll, I'll be reaching out in, in, in form of communication in one way or another soon. But if you need your apparel, uh, merchandising, training equipment, all things bear football, netball, basketball, any kind of sport, standard standard outfits, customization, you name it, we can do it. Uh, I'll be in touch or you can reach out to me, no problem. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, um, brilliant, brilliant news. And, uh, mate, as a result, we've got a few little, 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 um, I guess, uh, messages from Sports Portal. Don't go away, folks. You're tuning in to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It is episode seven. Tonight's main sponsor, main episode sponsor is Ozcro Import and our new um, our business advertising uh, partner is Sports Portal. There you go, Dandy Nong City, um, the Strathmore split, uh, North, Geelong, North Geelong, Croatia, and Canberra, Canberra Croatia. Croatia as well. Alka um, Park. Alka Park Cardinals, Cardinals, yeah, we can't forget them as well. So there's um five clubs there, Alka Park Cardinals, for those that are not in the know, is the, oh, I guess, the affiliate club, if you like, of the North Geelong Warriors or the community, um, local community league club. Um, mate, now, we've a lot's been happening here in Australia. Heaps has been happening in Croatia as well. So we're going to turn straight away to that. Um, but uh, I guess the, the big news is, um, well, in the last few days, as far as the, the COVID restrictions are concerned, um, is that the crowds now are returning to 100% capac capacity just in time for tomorrow uh, or tonight's or tomorrow morning's, however you want to call it, um, Hrvatski Nogometni Cup, um, the Highness Cup which um, is going to be played in split. Um, I think there's 15,000 minimum, um, um, 15,000 tickets have already been snapped up for this. No doubt there's going to be a lot of walk-ins. Um, you could probably expect 20,000 plus at the Poljud. Um, big game, that one. Uh, Hajduk taking on Gorica. Before we talk about the league, uh, Josip, um, yep. uh, Hajduk, believe it or not, are going into this game as the underdogs because... Hajduk has taken on Gorica 
twice prior to, prior to, to tomorrow night, tomorrow morning's game. They've taken on twice and lost both times on the um, the quarterfinal in 2019-2020. Uh, there you go. 2-1 they lost. And then last year in the quarterfinals, um, or the round of 16, I should say, in the quarterfinals, 3-0. So tomorrow it's the semifinal. Um, they are, in fact, um, the underdog. Very strange, well, isn't it? Well, it's, it is strange considering that they're playing at the podium. And um, the, the, the massive, um, mm. uh, what's it called, strength that they bring to, from their supporters. Uh, so um, I, I find it hard that, uh, that that's been broadcast in that fashion. But yeah. uh, look, the results speak for themselves. Uh, Gordica has been a thorn in the side for many throughout the season to date. And they do have those topsy-turvy results. Uh, sometimes they lift, other times they drop. Um, all, all things... On, on the table there, it looks like it, it will then be an interesting um, game and particularly tight affair, I think, mm. because Haydook will be weary, right? They'll understand they will that this, this will be a thorn in their side that they need to take out. Absolutely. Now, speaking of Gorica, we keep on harping on about how the Prva Hrvatska Nogometna Liga is just gaining in popularity, gaining in credibility. News during the week, Gorica, an English um, championship club, which and they are the current leaders of the championship, Fulham, yep. have actually signed a um, an agreement, a, a working agreement. Now, what exactly this entails, we don't really know at this stage, but there's a likelihood that... Um, that, that Fulham could be loaning out some players to Gorica um, either for the remainder of this season or in you know years to come. There's going to be, obviously, a fair bit of cooperation, collaboration with regards to um, uh, coaching, um, training coaching coaches, et cetera, et cetera. Um, who knows? Who knows what this... Um, I don't think there's going to be any monetary um, um, benefit or anything like that. But um, nonetheless, it's a it's a big move for a one of the clubs that is not in the top four uh, of the Croatian league. Um, big big news for Gorica, Josip. Oh, we lost Josip. Oh, looks like we have lost Josip. I don't know what's going on there. Hopefully, he's going to be back. We're going to go uh, forge ahead, folks. Um, so we're going to have a look at the results that happened in the 25th round. Slaven Belupo defeated Dragovoljac 1-0. Lokomotiva defeated Gorica 2-0. Um, Shibanik defeated Istra 2-1. But the big games, the two big derbies in split, Hajduk. Hajduk suffered its fifth loss um, at the hands of Rijeka. Um, um, and they, that, that was their fifth loss in six games at the Poljud Stadium. So I'm not too sure what's going on there. But um, um, Hajduk lost 1-3, and then Osijek defeated Dinamo. So this is big news. Um, this is a really big news for the Croatian League. It means now that Osijek... Um, um, have we got Josip back? I think we have got Josip back. Um, Josip, you there? Yeah, mate. Uh, oh, he's back. Cool. I, 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 I could see, see you. you. I could see you. I can hear you, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> Uh, looking at the Croatian League, Josip, we just uh, touched on Osijek defeating Dinamo, Rijeka defeating Hajduk, um, and it just gets every week, it just seems to get more and more thrilling, more and more exciting. And um, look, after 25 rounds, you've got Osijek on top now by two points they, from Dinamo, who does have a game in hand against Hajduk. Now, the news during the week is that um, postponed game will now be played on the 20th of March. Originally, I think it was the 12th of March. It has been moved back a week. I'm not too sure exactly why, um, but nonetheless, um, it's 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 a it means that um, that game and there's two other Hayduk versus Dinamo games this year, mate. I think it, I'll tell you what it could come back down to those um, those um, fixtures. It's going to yeah. be absolutely thrilling. The fixtures coming up, Yossi. Did you want yeah, to go through well them? Oh, look, the, the the two that I want to point out, uh, rather than going through all of them, is the Easter and Hayduk. Now, Easter, we know, has at times popped up and caused some uh, chaos for teams throughout the year, including Dinamo themselves. So there's a watch out there for Hayduk and, mm. uh, and and Dinamo themselves, right? Um, Shibanik probably don't want to go out the way they've been performing, so they're going to be trying to step up and put a halt to that. We've lost to Yosip, yep. have we? No, no. no. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's all right. Uh, 
Sorry, I, I think I just I just jumped the queue there. I put the the Druga Liga results, but we're still on the Prva yep. Liga at the moment, first division. Yep. Off. All righty, uh, we, can, we can go. We can move along there, mate. We can move along. Okay, turning our attention now to the second division. Um, there, there are the results there. I guess the only one that really needs to be made mention of is Varajdin and Inter. Varajdin, the leaders. Well, um, not anymore. Um, they'll, they'll be. I mean, they are still very. Uh, no, they're, they're, they're still on top. They're on top for two yeah, points. But yeah. um, I tell you what, yeah, it's going to be very close there. Look, they're on top. And if we put the ladder on, even despite that result, yeah. they are on top. But Rudesh now, who are in second position, actually have a game in hand and they're only two points behind. So yeah. Rudesh has got a game in hand against uh, Lowly Tsibali of Inkovci. Um, I hate saying lowly Tsibali of Inkovci. I really, really have got a soft spot for Tsibali of Inkovci. I really yeah. wish that they could move up. That's uh, that's that's the local club to where my two brothers Ivan and and Tomislav were, were born, and um, yeah. so it, it's it, it is a bit dear to to them as well. So uh, we, we don't like to call them lowly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, Varajdin. So on top, Rudesh breathing very much down their neck. Moving on to the fixtures for round 19 this weekend. Uh, the pick of the bunch there, Kustoshia, or Kustoshia as it's pronounced apparently by locals in Zagreb, um, taking on Varajdin. And then Inter Zapresic taking on Rudesh. Now, can the Zapresiciani um, cause another uh, um, uh, upset? upset of sorts. Yeah. yeah. By uh, defeating Rudesh and then doing Varajdin a favour, who knows? But uh, it's an interesting game. I, I actually would like to see Rudesh continue on their ways for the sheer reason of the Australian connection within Rudesh at the moment. Yes, so yes, it'd be great to see that. that. It'd be great to see that yeah. in the Priva. Yeah. yeah, and uh, speaking of Croatian connections in the second division, there's quite a few there. But uh, Dubrava Zagreb taking on Dugopolje, um, which is on a team based from the periphery of Split. Has got a very strong um, Australian-Croatian connection there with the signing, recent signing of Luka Skorko, the son of um, former Hajduk split captain and current North Geelong Warriors senior football director, Josip Skorko. Yep. Um, I don't know. Shall we Shall we break the news now? Let's Josip, do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Yeah. Well, um, you. I'll, I'll give you the pleasure of doing that. Oh, well, uh, ne next week, special guest for us uh, would be Nicholas Valarovic and Lucas Korko to give us their insight, just like we did with Marco Bullish mm -hmm. last week. Give us the insights from their perspective, what it was like to go over there, get involved, how it came about, and, and, and a little bit about their journey, about how they got what, what's happened to date. So, um, yeah, even like setting up home, I know they recently had moved into a new apartment. So, um, you know, they had to get their things together and sort out their bearings in amongst that professional attitude towards training and games. So yeah. it'd be great great to get that insight off the, off the lads and share that with uh, particularly our talented youth coming through. Absolutely. Well, I look forward to that. And that should be quite interesting um, with regards to that. Folks, you've been tuning into the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It's episode number seven. Jeez, it goes, goes by so quickly, so super quickly. Um, next week is episode eight. Um, we've got Nicholas Volarovic. Um, we've got Luca Skorko joining us. Um, both former North Geelong Warriors uh, players, juniors, or however you want to call it that, I suppose. Um, and also, when we, we're, we're breaking news as well, um, once again, Josip, I'll let you do the um, do the um, honours on this one because this is a club that's very, very close to your heart. Next week's club in focus, folks, you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this one. don't want to miss this, it's, yeah. It's a mild stomping ground, Newcastle, and we will yeah. be having uh, the club representatives jumping on board to explain to us uh, how this reinitiated, the spirit behind it, and as we see on the social media posts, it seems like a, another sponsor every day. So I, I'm just excited for them. Uh, every time I read it, my, my face lights up. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll look forward to that one.
Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. It is episode seven, proudly brought to you by um, by Ozcrow Imports. Um, love the name because it's very similar to our show. Now, uh, before we do go on your sip, how can we not say anything about the um, Bihar Liga because there uh-huh. are some Croatian clubs there as well? Um, yep. That was played last round. Round twenty was played last week. We had Zrinski travel to to uh, Bosna to pl- take on Prijedor. So Zrinski Mostar defeated Priedor 1 0. Um, Posushi, unfortunately, um, they, they had a red card and they went down 1 3 to Radnik Bielina. Bielina. Um, and then we had Shiroki Brieg, who also got red carded, and they went down to Borat Banja Luka 3 0. Yeah, that's, that, that's the real sort of uh, the, bitter, the bitter one there for the week, is because yeah. we really want to see Shiroki lift and try and push for those UEFA spots, and that's just going to make life a little bit more difficult for him. Good to see Zelensky continue their ways, and yep. uh, let's let's say the Pusashi can uh, just stay away from that drop zone. Yeah, absolutely. Shiroki Brieg are in fifth spot. They're on 27 points. Pusashi are in 10th spot. It's a 12 team competition. Rem- uh, remember in in, in Beha. Um, they, they're on 16 points, but uh, Zirinsky sitting very pretty at the top with 51 points, 14 clear of second place Tuzla City. Um, so that's a that's a sizable. They've maintained that sizable um, uh, lead at the very top. Thank you very much, Josip. Um, glad. One, you... one thing yeah. that's come, come thanks to the the GM of South East Queensland Football, Damien Breshish himself. Thank you, Damage, for the upgrade of the news. For the Gold Coast Knights QPL4 team, action mm-hmm. will return on the 13th of March. So locally here on the Gold Coast, uh, the, the lads can return. It's just the MPL that's going to be greatly impacted by two or three weeks. There you go. Well, it's time um, we now um, bring our first guest. Um, um, it's um, it's an absolute pleasure. to, to it's, it's, it's club-focused time. We're going to be talking um, to Strathmore Split now. Josipe, with Strathmore Split, they're based in the northern suburbs of Melbourne. They've got a very, very interesting, um, oh, d- do we say club model, club structure, the way they run their their, 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 their club. Um, it's it's very interesting. And and I'll tell you what, what I'm, um, ooh, he's, he's, he's in the green room and he's ready to come on. He is the um, senior men's director and he's also one of the, the members of the committee, I guess, the executive. And he'll be able to explain to us how that operates because it's a very unique model. It's an absolute pleasure to introduce to the show uh, none other than um, Ante Stipic. Ante, welcome Auntie, to the welcome show. How are you? How are you? Good evening, guys. How are we? Now we've got hey, a bit of an hey, echo there. there. Have you got? Uh, have you got a second screen on or something? <sighs> no. No. Nope. All right. All right. Nice. There. All right. Oh, can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yeah, we, we can, can hear you, mate. Hear you. How are you, mate? How are you, mate? How's Fantastic. How are you guys? Well, very well, good, very mate. Very good. good. Very it's great, great to have great you, on, to the have you on the show. Um, it's a bit um, dark there. Dark. I don't know. We yeah, can't see your can't pretty see face. Your we can face. just see we that skull shining, <laughs> shining very, very <laughs> brightly from <laughs> overhead. What's going, <laughs> What's going on? I've got to thank you uh, for finding that uh, old LinkedIn uh, photo of myself and putting on uh, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're an elusive, you're an elusive man. man. You're very you're hard very to get a hold of. So we had to just settle for whatever we could find. That's all right. That's why we're That's caps, why we're by, the caps way, by the way, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie, all jokes aside, thank you for coming, on, coming to on, show on, on to the show tonight, courtesy of Ozcro Imports, who are tonight's sponsor, sponsor, and they have and nominated Strathmore Split as our, um, as our, as our, as our, as our club, club in focus. focus. Mate, first of all, let's talk about Strathmore Split. You've got a very interesting club structure, I guess. Tell us a bit more how it's run. Look, if we go back, it's, it was a uh, structure that we kind of, uh, it's been probably about seven, eight years now in place. And I think the issue going back in the past is, uh, you know, when you try to nominate someone to be a president or even in the committee at an AGM, um, quite difficult to get volunteers to help. So we kind of tried to uh, break it down, dissect it into different areas um, to be more operational, I guess. Um and uh, spawned the idea we can have an, uh, uh, an odd number of uh, people in the committee uh, focused on purely, um, uh, you know, uh, key aspects of the, uh, of the club. And, and it's been uh, running like that since. Okay. Do you, do you have to set up the club differently in terms of governance and constitution? 
we've we've got that all in place. So it just this just kind of allows us to be more focused on a particular area. So uh, you know, when we previous president, you know, was there for about twenty years when we were a small club with just two teams, um, and then uh, as slowly the club kind of grew. The, the challenge was when he stepped down, trying to find someone to be the president who would pretty much be the uh, the go-to man and be responsible for doing everything. So it was always a bit difficult and challenging to find someone to volunteer to be the uh, the head of the club. So at an AGM, you know, you got to that point of the, of the uh, the meeting where no one wants to put their hands up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we just started to uh, be more focused on particular areas. It becomes an all too familiar thing at most a AGMs. That's what the AGMs seem to attract such a, a poor attendance, I guess. Um, but aren't it, mm -hmm. this is an opportunity for you maybe to sort of plug some of the other members of the executive or do you call it the executive? Do you call it the committee? What do you call it? Board of Directors. Board of Directors. Ooh, good. It's very corporate sounding. Isn't so it? there's five of us. So yeah. um, obviously myself, there's uh, Jim Tabakas. He's uh, operational focus. The head of us is <laughs> yes. Uh, Ante Dragovic, he's the, uh, the club treasurer, uh, brother of George, uh, Sava's president. Uh, we got uh, Maria uh, Raich, who's the, uh, the junior president, and Josip Alubric, who looks after the, uh, the women's team. Excellent. Excellent. And how do you find how does how, 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 how does how does it all function? Do you meet you know face to face once a week, or do you do it over Zoom, or is there someone that's sort of like the actual face of the club? Um, in this particular case, I guess you are. But uh, <laughs> I know. Seems to be the go-to man for everything. Ante Dragovic will probably say that he's the most powerful figure at Strathmore Split, no doubt. No, he's the he's the sexiest. He'll tell you the sexiest. Is that what he, is that what he reckons? He's the sexiest. You said it, mate. So, yeah. now look, yeah. we, we, we function, okay? Everyone knows their roles and we all help each other. So um, I think it's very important. We've got to support each other, even though we're responsible for different aspects. And, um, uh, yeah, look, we we meet up when, when he's required. We, we're in constant daily contact. Um, so, so far, it's been, um, it's been, it's been manageable. Yeah, you talk about the club about growing the club um, over, over the last few last years. Year. Tell us exactly Tell us how many exactly juniors, how many, juniors, how many uh, players, players overall. overall. Um, um, you know, um, um, sponsors, sponsors is, 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 is that another is thing that that's another growing, thing as, well? growing as well? So, so from a club aspect, we we we're from uh, yeah the non gamers all the way through to masters team. Mm -hmm. So you got the uh, the mini roos, the juniors, the men's, the women's teams. Um, and so we've got a thirds men's team and a, uh, a masters team. So we're talking about nearly 300 plays in total wow. um, across the club. So, um, you know, we've grown, I think, in the last decade um, organically. Uh, you know, we were two two team club seniors and reserves, took on the thirds team. There were players that couldn't commit on a Saturday due to work, want to still have a kick, don't want to train. Um, so that spawned the thirds team and then we started off with two junior teams through through um rob mullovich brought he, uh, a past player who's a current team manager of the seniors he brought his uh his kids playing at another club and and, and they were uh, leaving that club and um so we're able to form two teams and from that the juniors have grown uh, at the moment we're probably tracking about 16 teams from a juniors aspect mm -hmm. that's a that's a fantastic, fantastic uh, uh bit of data bit to put up to show uh, a, a journey of life, journey and, of life and the growth in numbers as too because oh, you, you know as much as I do um, the old the old name Glenroy split starting off in Broad Meadows right and where where the club yep. is to play out from and where they've reached so far that's been a, a fantastic story how, how did that uh, initiative turn around to come to Strathnava the past uh, president, uh, I've got to give him credit, Steve Sinkovich. He, uh, he for for a number of years, he was always looking to um, to find a, a venue, a suitable uh, location for the for the club that could have more, I guess, more improved facilities. I think most important was like a social room, because playing at Broadmeadows High School, um, there was no social room there. The uh, the change rooms were were pretty ordinary, um, so we we're losing a lot of that club. Um, you know, team bonding, it was done, obviously, going to the pub. Um, so for the club to survive, we needed to have our own venue. 
Um, so uh, came across um, Strathnaver Reserve. Um, it was a reserve, a ground that no one wanted. It was deemed too hard. It was very derelict. There was no lights. There was no irrigation. Uh, you couldn't get down the car park. Uh, there was potholes everywhere. So the ground was, like I said, it was rejected by many other soccer clubs, other footy clubs, because uh, it was just uh, too, in the too hard basket. But uh, the past president saw the, uh, the vision um, that we could try to, uh, you know, build on that. And so that happened about 2003. Um, so we've been at, uh, so we moved from uh, Broadmeadows High really? to Strathnova. Wow. We can actually see on the screen some action there from, I think it was Layla United Slaugher and, and, and Strathmore Split last year at Strathnaver Reserve. So we can actually see the, the great um, club rooms, the grandstand there behind yes. the, uh, one of the goals. Um, absolutely fantastic, it looks. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was obviously one of my... Uh, you know, strong initiatives. When I joined the uh, the committee back in 2008, um, we we're getting to a point where we needed to, uh, there's a group of us that, that joined the committee to kind of take the club, to support the club. because so we found that the club, uh, the players were aging. Uh, the club was obviously going the uh, the wrong way to, to, to help out. So I joined with the sole purpose of being the, uh, the liaison with the council. So by working together with the council, try to get some improvements to the facility. So where the, the my thinking was, if we can have a decent facility, we could attract better players um, and stabilise the club. So um, it's something that I took on and worked pretty uh, you know, pretty hard with the council. And uh, you know, a number of years later, we were uh, uh, successfully awarded a, uh, a capital grants, a capital works grant to um, to get a new pavilion. So that yeah. happened about 2014. And that, and that pavilion, and that pavilion uh, uh, it's, it's fantastic, right? Fantastic. In, in terms Two of and a half million and dollars, yeah. Yeah, in terms well, of size well, and serviceability well, for a, a club of the size of uh, Strathmore, yeah. it's, it's a fantastic, yeah. fantastic place. But yeah. Now, do you now you, it's a game changer. Actually, yeah. I wanted to ask, yeah. sorry, uh, Yossi, I wanted to ask you something, um, Ante. Do you have, like, you access have, like, to that all year round, round or do you have to share it with, like, a cricket club or anything like that? No, no. And is that no, why that's the challenge the we fencing, face? The fencing, the proper fencing around the pitch itself. No, no, that's the challenge we've got. Yep. Because uh, the council within uh, uh, Mooney Valley Council, they're, um, they've got a strict policy of multi use facilities, yep. Yep. Um, deeming you know, winter, summer sports, even though there's only about four teams. That, so the cricket club uses it during the summer. So they've got about four teams that use that during the summer uh, randomly there probably once or twice a week, um, and they're spread across a number of other rivals. So it's a, it's, yeah, it's a constant battle every year from, yeah. from gaining early pre-season access to pre-season training yeah. Yeah. to, you know, we have to, we've got to take all the pictures down and pack all our stuff um, and hand mm. the keys back. Uh, that's, that's so from nice. a club operation, it's uh, very difficult. Yeah, that's that yeah, stinks that's, really. You, you, even um, um you know, I know in Geelong, know, Geelong even Geelong, people that share that locations, share they location, can share the club share rooms and not have and to not be have impacted to be like this. Yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's a yeah. that's a bit of crap, I think. Um, yeah, uh, Ante, Ante, just a little, just bit, a little of, bit of uh, to, to, and uh, and to and fro. So, so back in the days back in the glory days when it was kicked off, we had we had the legendary Frank Teresa. We can't have a conversation about split without. <laughs> mentioning Frank's contribution, Frank's contribution to, the club. to the club, he seems the to founder, be. Yes, he seems to be the uh, Croatian, uh, Croatian version of version Eddie Maguire. Eddie everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, uh, Tony uh, Grigic pointed Tony out during, during the week. He holds he a membership, holds at, every membership at every club in Victoria. Victoria. He now, loves football. Now, yeah, loves football, loves right? Football. Um, yep. but I, I think that he. No, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that his presence for such a long time. Has sort of embedded itself, embedded itself into the itself generation, of generation of yourself, Steve Sinkovic, Dragovic, and others that have hung others, around. Hung around. You, you, you're kind of like, well, I've just like, embraced this part of it, an extension of my family, of my right? family right? Yeah, no, there's always our, yes, he's there every training session, every game. He, uh, you'll see him at, you know, at Melbourne, Croatia, at Dinamore. Uh, you know, I don't know if he goes all the way to Geelong. He you know, does. He's he getting does. old. He does. Yeah, yeah, he's about 83, I think, now. So, um, uh, so wherever there's football, you'll see it as, or especially if there's uh, where you know there's a Croatian club involved, he'll be there. So, and he was instrumental to, you know, I said he founded the club. 
he had a vision, an idea, you know, and um, he went with it. He, he identified there was a number of, you know, uh, Croatian immigrants playing around at different clubs and he brought them together and formed another Croatian club to play at an amateur level. Yeah. Um, so, and he's still there. So, he's still got the same passion. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, that's that, right. that won't disappear, that won't mate. Disappear, mate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, aren't oh, it? We, we talked about the limitations of the infrastructure there at Strathnaver Reserve, I guess, when we talk about the limitations, accessibility and seasonal accessibility. Is that, I mean, the clubs now, as far as the senior men, is in a state one competition. Is that holding the club back from growing further and possibly eventually maybe one day entering the NPL um, area? Area? Uh, I, I, definitely, definitely. I, I look, I look at it from an operational point of view, you know. So uh, when it comes uh, September, like I said, you uh, you got to pack everything up, mm. and then um, and you just can't operate functionally compared to other clubs, be it in the same league or, or below, even let alone above. Um, so you know, facilities has always been a very important uh, aspect. Um, you know, we've come a long way. You know, but. You know, the club, myself, heavily involved with the council and still that's one of the other hats I wear at the club. Um, you know, you know I've, I was instrumental, you know, getting uh, grants for, for flood lighting, six poles up there, installation of drainage. You know, uh, now we've got irrigation as well, a car park extension. Um, so everything, for, yeah, putting high fencing. So there's mm -hmm. been a lot of works there. That's been central to our club's involvement. Um, and unfortunately, you're dealing with a council that, you know, wants to, you know, just sit in the fence and, and try to be reasonable. So uh, facilities is one thing, but also it's assistance. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> that we possible? have a lot of issues. Yeah. Um, now, uh, when we, yeah, we talk we about the history of, of, the, of the club, uh, I guess one uh, thing guess we, one we haven't mentioned is, a, you know, a, a very, very, very famous, well, there's a lot of famous people who've had Socceroos involved in the club. And in fact, one Socceroo, ex-Socceroo, who was a coach at um, at Split, was um, is our guest later on, Ivan Franic, who's in the green room now. But another one, Billy Wojtek, he was um, heavily involved with the club, so much so that the old ground up at Glenroy, what was it called, the Blen uh, Broadmeadows High School, that was actually named... Uh, Billy Wojtek Reserve. Tell us tell involvement, involvement in the club. Yeah, so that was before my time, before I joined. So we're talking probably the or late 80s, early 90s, I think it was. Um, yeah, so yeah, you're, you're, yeah, only you're only 21, 21 aren't you? This is your He's speechless, he's aren't he's he? He's speechless. He's what speechless. He's I wish. So, so yeah, so, look, he spent a, uh, a couple of years there. So, um, and uh, I think it was something that actually, uh, as Julich mentioned before about Rez, I think it was something that Rez or, uh, you know, was, uh, you know, involved with and, and naming the ground after him. Um, and uh, there was a little uh, uh, still fabricated scoreboard and uh, had, the, uh, had his name up there, the Billy Vortec Reserve. So, the one that had split, split panels on it as well. Split, good old split panels, yes. <laughs> now, speaking of split panels, apparently um, Glenroy Split did not get its name from the city of Split um, in Dalmatia. It got its name somehow from a different source. Tell us a bit more. More interesting. Yeah, you're right, Tonchi, yes. So when, uh, when speaking of Rezo again, when he founded the club yeah. Um, yeah. to play back in the, uh, the old industrial leagues, the, uh, you needed a uh, uh, someone to, to to sponsor you as per right, there. Yeah. So um, uh, and you, uh, back in those days, a lot of clubs had uh, various organisations named after uh, playing under an organisation, a company name. So he needed a sponsor, and he stumbled across somewhere around that came before the area split auto repairs, and <laughs> um, he agreed to sponsor as long as the name was split. And uh, if you look at the original logos uh, of the you know, the club, he, you know, there's a little vehicle in there and I think they'll nickname the panel beaters, you know, so... Right? Um, were they actually Croatians, the, um, the yeah. split automotives? Yes, they yes. Actually, it, yeah. Here's my family here's connection my family coming in our thoughts. My oh, brother yeah. and oh, brother-in-law yeah. brought that business off the gentleman. <laughs> there you there go. You go. Small world. Small world. Speaking, speaking of connections to Split, I have to tell you my claim to fame. Um, I was a guest player with Split up at, um, I think it was in Sydney at, uh, at the... Um, 2006. 
Tony, uh, Tom, uh, Tom Corsord and Sinkovic and what you not asked me, there. I think I was a member of the Savis then, yeah. yeah. Um, they um, needed, they to needed to play to fill in. So here we are playing on the hallow turf of Denzel Park against Glenorchy Knights. Knight. And our midfielder, star midfielder, the Taunchy Pulsats lookalike, they reckon is a doppelganger, Ivan Ljubic, famously known as Tsuda. There he was in the middle of the park, not a player from either side anywhere near him. Pristine. Ground, ground and he's just, and he's just fallen, fallen over, over his own, his own feet. feet. One of the funniest, of the things, funniest things I've ever seen. I've ever seen. But um, it just yes. exemplified what a good what a spirit good that the club that had. The club it, had. It, it was just it such. Just, the guys from Glen Orky Nights, they couldn't, believe, Knights, they couldn't they believe it. They just thought, geez, you guys are just laughing at each other, having a good time. And I mean, Split was always renowned as as that club, as that association of people that could always have a good time. Is that, You're right, that continued under your under your, under your, uh, your uh, collective leadership? <laughs> well, yeah, Tochi, because we've grown and we've tried to retain a lot of the the players who start, uh, you know, get moving on in age or work commitments, family commitments. So, you know, we, we started the thirds team and, and, and obviously Supka, we had a fourth who's is morphed into the, uh, the Masters team now. So we try to retain all players and give them, uh, you know, an opportunity there to continue playing and still being involved, have that camaraderie and banter. Um, and especially now, you know, there's a lot of interest in um, a number of years with um, the Croatian tournament being so successful. Um, so, uh, you know, we've allowed, we've provided opportunities for, for players. Um, so the first team's been successful in the, num in the last couple of years, um, going from state four to now state one. Um, so that's, that started get, getting a bit on the, more on the serious side. Um, but we still want to, you know, keep those fundamentals of having a good uh, team culture in place. And speaking of uh, State uh, 1, um, uh, to change a coach change unexpectedly, the coach uh, Harry, uh, Harry had to, uh, have to depart after depart spending after a few years, years with the club and lifting him up to the State League level, State League, League 1 level. level. Big job on for Brendan. We'll have him on shortly. Yep. Have you set the expectations straight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Promotion. <laughs> state That's state one to NPL three. Love it. Love it. Love it. We're all winners. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Look, anything's mate, possible. Mate. So, yeah. Yeah. as we've seen, as we've seen. Yep. Yeah, nope. it's been a phenomenal, been a phenomenal rise up the up the um the, uh, the ranks for the men's team. We look forward to also hearing great new stuff about the um uh, split women's team as well as the juniors. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it's it augurs well for a really good, bright future for the club, and you just seem to have a real community feel about the club. A lot of um second and third generation Australian Croatians involved. So, um, wishing you mate all the best and everyone at um Strathmore Split. This is going live, by the way, to the Strathmore Split Facebook page. Um, so a big shout out to everyone involved behind the scenes for making that happen. Anya, 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 thanks for spending some time with us. And before I go, my brother Tom said, uh, Brendan's got big shoes to fill because he was once upon a time sports coach too. Yes, he was. Yes. If you look at our history, we've had a lot of uh, yeah, interesting players, let alone coaches. Yeah. Players, good on, good on you, mate. all the best for the year, mate. Thank you guys for having me and uh, keep up the good work. Great show. Good on you. That was uh, Ante Stipic. Uh, he's a real character, isn't he? He's a he's a he's a he's a great person to have on the show. Um, absolutely. Uh, you know when he's in the room. Yeah, we do, we do. Now, uh, before we do go on to further on, um, Strathmore Split are seeking additional players for the following junior league teams in 2022: the under 12s. The uh, under 13s, the under 14s, and the under 15 girls team preseason has commenced. Register your interest now. Mare Reich is the junior director. Her mobile number is 0417 317 906. Or you can email fcstrathmorejsc at gmail.com. So that's fcstrathmorejsc.com. Um, now uh, we're going to we're going to basically jump uh, jump uh, straight into our next guest. Um, really uh, looking forward to having this person on. He um, he is the the new coach, the newly appointed coach of um, Strathmore Split Men's. It's um, former um, NSL or former um, A League star as well, Brendan Santalab, or should we say Shantalab? 
Brendan, welcome to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Absolute pleasure having you on. How are you? Welcome, mate. He's on mute. Tonch, he's on mute. Hello, can we hear you, Brendan? We can't hear him. Oh. Hello, we... Brendan. Can you hear us? If I unmute him. Yep. Hello, can you hear us now? Okay, we can see him, but we just can't hear him. So we'll get Brendan just to uh, log off and then log back on. Um, he, he can he can obviously hear us, but he just can't see us. Now, um, well, while we while we wait for that, Josipe, um, let's talk about um, Brendan's appointment. So um, he was appointed just recently, and there's a press release here. Uh, delighted to announce the appointment of Brendan Santalab for the 2022 season. Santa has been a senior team member for the past years and did not hesitate to step into the vacated role. Um, upon taking the role, he was quoted as saying, I am incredibly honoured to be given the opportunity as head coach of Strathmore Split. Um, the Split Chun have a long history um, with uh, a winning mentality. I look forward to um, to utilising my experience to further improve the players and raise the standard. I am looking forward to the challenge and preparing the team for the season. And um, there's con a big, you know, congratulating him for entering for joining um split we've got brendan back hopefully we can hear him now brendan can you hear us yes gentlemen oh, yeah. great. Great. <laughs> good evening good evening fellas thanks for having me on the show appreciate it absolutely hey, pleasure. just lift I, that logo up a bit higher there so we can see the legea yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys is it legea or legea legea I, I was going to the Strathmore Crest. Yeah, both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> the the kit sponsor. We'll, we'll, we'll put you there on, on, on solo so that we can uh, we can see you. Brendan, um, mate, uh, you, you've come in um, on the eve of the season. How is the team looking this year? First of all, let's talk about the team this year. How, how are they looking? Yeah, no, I couldn't uh, be happier with the, with the way the boys have conducted themselves. Um, since Harry's departure, uh, they've been outstanding, uh, their attitudes and their work rate. Uh, we managed to sign about five players last week. Um, and yes, it's oh, wow. uh, obviously been challenging uh, since Harry left. And um, But like I said, the boys have, have uh, really stood up and showed that um, they want to achieve something this season. Well, that's there's there's some footage there from last year's squad, um, and that was at Strathnava Reserve, so people can can have a look at that. Um, and that's courtesy of of, of Layla Layla Slorga, the Macedonian club, um, from their YouTube channel. Um, but um, obviously, this year's squad is going to look vastly different to to the one from last year. You mentioned five players have been signed. Um, uh, did you did you want to uh, reveal who they are? Uh, no, actually, you can see them during the season. Uh, ah, there we look go. At look at that. He's taken the coach. He's taken the coach role real seriously already. Look at him. <laughs> no, it's a it's a great opportunity. An opportunity I couldn't refuse. Um, I was put into the interim role when Harry left, and um, and to be honest, I, I it's come a bit premature. I wanted to start coaching in about four or five years' time. Um, the opportunity presented itself now, and um, and I thought, why not? I love a challenge. Yeah. Uh, don't mind pressure. Um, it's been there right throughout my career. Uh, this is another opportunity to to face a challenge and pressure, and um, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm I've got a great squad, um, and most importantly, I've got great people um, that I'm working with, and. Whenever you're working with great people, you can always be successful. So uh, happy to have the group I have. So, Santa, you've uh, you, you bring a lot to the table, and you've you've had a a, a colourful career where you've shared some time professionally across the world and as well as locally in Australia. Um, the f the first thing I wanted to touch base with you is your your first overseas professional gig in Singapore. Tell me from a young man's perspective, you know, we're talking, what is it, 18, 19 years ago, somewhere around about there, you, you decided to go, oh, well, I'm going to go to Singapore and see what that's like. Was that something you thought you wanted to do? Someone threw it on the table? How did that come about? Oh, I think, you know, as a kid, you dream of being a professional footballer. And then when opportunities 
uh, arose during my career, I never hesitated in in uh, in taking them. Um, you know, the opportunity came up in China later in my career, in Belgium, in Hungary, and I never refused one offer. To be honest, uh, every single offer I got, I took, um, and I think that's that's the way I've always been. Um, I've always respected and appreciated um, the clubs and the people who who showed belief and, and interest in me. And, um, and you know, I think being at Strathmore now um, and the opportunities that they've created for me outside of football, um, it was a no-brainer to, to give back to the club um, and take this role. Now, Santa, oh. um, you started your – you were born in Wollongong, so you actually started playing for, for Wollongong, Croatia, or South Coast United, as they're known. Um, at what at what stage did you kind of decide that's it? The little boy from Wollongong is going to go out into the world um, and become a professional footballer. Uh, what at what stage of your I guess your 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 development did you kind of make that conscientious decision? Uh, I'm going to take this seriously, like not just um, uh, mucking around or get to where the highest I can get, but actually wanting to make a living out of it. I think Tonch. Uh... You know, starting when I was a kid, I was obsessed with the game. Um, I used to go to a shopping centre with a ball in my hand, you know, and um, I'd come home from school and I'd constantly kick the ball against the wall and teach myself. Um, so I think, you know, naturally, I deep down wanted to become a, a professional footballer. And I think yep. the only way to do that is to be obsessed with the game and, and really love the game. Um, and I was lucky enough to pretty much play at the highest level since, uh, you know, 11 years old. I was, I was playing at the representative level um, and then just progressed all the way through. Um, the only place where I probably wanted to uh, get to was the Australian Institute of Sport. Um, I went for a trial down there and, and was unsuccessful. Um, but that just... Uh, Gave me more drive and determination to prove them wrong and um, and go on and achieve things, which uh, I was I was lucky to do. That's uh, actually that's excellent to hear about. Mm. I mean, it's sad that they overlooked you and you didn't get the opportunity. But what I do like is that spirit to say, you know, I'm not done with just because you're saying um, my time's not now. I'm gonna be. I'll show you another way. We've seen a young. Uh, Sorry, young Italian. Caputo, is it? That's gone to mm -hmm. Roma? Yep. You know, A-League clubs overlooked him and now he's playing Serie A, getting, you know, scoring goals. So uh, yeah, and, yeah, young, and young just, players need to take heed of that advice. Yeah, and, and I mean, just touching on that, I wasn't wanted by the Wollongong Wolves. I, I was through their whole junior program uh, from 13s to 16s and then it came to National Youth League. Um, and they said I was too small, too short. Um, and I went to Parramatta Power in Sydney. Um, and a year later, I made my debut in the NSL. Um, and I, I scored on debut. And um, that was, you know, a start of uh, something very special for myself. That was to come um, to go on and play 20 years as a professional. And yeah. um, during that 20 years, there were, there were challenges every single season of my career whether it was injury um or not wanted by clubs or coaches but i think the most important thing for for young kids um growing up and when they face rejection is to is to never give up and use that as motivation to try and go on and be successful and better themselves well, well, you know, uh, speaking of your of your career um, and and the way you've gone about it, um, I think for me personally, uh, seeing you enter the the old NSL as it was back then, and then coming into the A League with Western Sydney Wanderers, um, it it was that uh, ability to change the game uh, from from a spectator's perspective um, to see someone coming off the coming off the peak, off the bench as he did numerous times for whatever reason the coaches are selected at the time, but. But all credit to you, every time you came on the pitch, you made an impact. You made sure that people remembered that I'm here, I'm, I'm going to cause disruption, 
Um, there were many games where I saw you challenging referees and players on the borderline of getting sent off. Um, but credit to you, because someone like you has inspired people like my young son, Benjamin, who's you know, he, he, from day one liked Western Sydney Wanderers. I won't say he's passionate about Western Sydney Wanderers, but he still calls them his club. Yeah, I mean, everywhere I've been, I've it didn't matter where in the world. Um, I think the most important thing for me was to uh, leave a legacy at every club I went to um, in the most positive way. And I think the only way, you know, the number one way is to show what you can do on the pitch. And then the other, the second way is how you conduct yourself off the pitch. Um, so every single club I went to uh, throughout my career, I... I you know, set the highest standards for myself uh, to represent the club at the highest level uh, and be the best possible footballer and person mm -hmm. I could be um, at all the clubs I was at. Um, and that that mindset was able to create, you know, a 20-year career and have so many great memories uh, and overcome so many obstacles along the way. What were, what were some of those memories um, over the 20 years uh, whether it be here locally in Australia or or abroad, um, what what really sticks in your mind? A couple of the, two or three things that really stick in your mind. I think my first overseas experience in Singapore was incredible. I think I was uh, 19, 20 years old at the time, um, and that for me as a person and a footballer just helped me grow, learning a different culture, um, living in a different country, and uh, that really, you know matured me as a as both a person and a footballer so that was a real highlight for me um and it really opened my eyes um and get, gave me drive to go on and want to achieve a lot more in my career um and it's pretty much simple as that tonch mm. Um, one of the coaches that, that had a big impact on you, obviously, was our, our very own Australian-Croatian, Tony Popovic, who was a bit of a mentor to you both at um, Western Sydney um, uh, for five years, and then at, at Perth Glory as well. Uh, we had Ivan Kelava, who's now on, um, down at Melbourne Victory, um, playing under Popovic, and he, and he really rates him highly. Um, apart from Popovic, who were some of the big coaches in, in your um, career, whether it be in the juniors or whether it be in the seniors, that you probably take something that they taught you into your own coaching career um, here at Strathmore? Yeah, obviously, Popper, um, incredible manager, and his uh, success uh, speaks for itself. But, you know, another one, uh, another Croatian uh, was Branko Celina, uh, which oh, yeah. many know. Um, yeah. You know, I think. Branko's passion for the game was was second to none. Um, he, he was really obsessed with the game. And um, there was a point where I was uh, at Sydney United and I was, uh, you know, as as you are when you're young, you're a little bit cocky and um, you think you're a bit too good um, than, what you, than what you are. And mm. Branko pretty much sorted my career out um, and, and said, if you don't sort yourself out, um, your career is going to be over. Wow! Um, and all and all it was was a was a coffee uh, between the two of us. Um, yeah. And from there, I went to Singapore. So you know, it was it was you know some some words from both Popper and Branko that you know guided me to go on and achieve things. Um, and I can now take you know all that experience from Branko and Popper into my coaching career. Um, well, that, that's, is, that's some good good backing there, mate. Yeah, it's truly yeah. Uh, invaluable experience, you know. Um, yeah. You know, two, two great names in Australian football um, and obviously Popper currently at the victory. Um, yeah. So, yeah. You're right in saying Branco's passion for the game is unbelievable. I caught up with him in the Gold Coast a couple of weeks ago and he's still, he's still so... You know, demonstrative about the game. So, you know, yeah, if you, if you raise the right topics, you can just see his eyes light up. You know, it's just yeah, what I spin out about the man. I think he's a Facebook friend of mine, and Branco. If you're tuning into the show, <laughs> drop us a, a, a in the comment section. I don't know how old the man is, but he man, he he looks like he could pull on the boots and play in the oh, A League. Oh, he looks ultra fit. He's great. He's in great condition. <laughs> yeah, he looks. He's he's got a tan like a leather couch. He's, he's constantly, <laughs> oh, no, he's constantly on, on he's, the beach. He's better than mine. 
Yeah, if you're driving past Brighton in Sydney, I can guarantee he's got his shirt off walking along the, the strip there. So uh, he's a good man, Branko. That's right. I'll, I'll send him a legia top just to cover him up. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Um, um, all right, but, uh, but, uh, Brendan, we're going to have to wind it up because we have got another legend, ex Socceroo um, star and, 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 and star of um, St. Albans, Dynamo and Melbourne Knights, Ivan Franich, joining us a little later on. Um, but before we do that, um, this week, the uh, Strathmore split in action against, uh, tell us a bit more about this game. In the yes, Australia, uh, Cup, it is. Brandon Park on Friday night, yes, at, at Dynamo. Um, we had to reschedule our game to, to Dynamo because Brandon Park uh, didn't have a have a pitch. Uh, so we're very grateful um, to them for, for giving us uh, the pitch for the night. Um, and, yeah, it's a great test for us. Obviously, um, it's our second game together. We had a draw with the Albion Rovers Um in my first game in charge and was very happy with what the boys uh, put on there. And um, and we face another little challenge now and, and it's great preparation leading into the season. So, yeah, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. So if you're out in the West um, and there's a lot of football happening this, uh, this Friday night, my word, with the NPL... Um, but um, certainly get yourself out to Churchill Reserve, have a, have a, have a quick squeeze at the um, Strathmore split squad for this year coming up. We're wishing you all the best for Friday night, but also the season proper, Brendan. All the very best and uh, look forward to, uh, um, actually look forward to uh, Strathmore, um, Strathmore split coming down to Geelong to take on Cario as well. So that, that should be fun. I'll, I'll look forward to that from a personal point of view. Yeah. Thanks, gentlemen. Have a good night. Wishing you all good the best. Jeez. Awesome. All the very, very best. Uh, that's uh, Brendan Santalab. What, a, what an absolute pleasure to chat to him, um, Josipe. But um, what I really, really enjoyed, and, and it's something I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying talking to some of the greats of our game, is wh where they've got to, how they've got to, and, and just some of the pearls of wisdom that they're able to impart on some of our younger viewers and listeners. Absolutely. And even even our coaching um, audience, people who are coaches and coach young kids, wow. if, if they can hear these words and, and when a young man or a young girl gets a little bit frustrated with where things are at in life, just to remind them and ground them and say, look, it happens even to the to the best, the Socceroos, the, the internationals, the people who had international careers. You, you hit walls, you'll overcome. Totally agree with you, mate. Or as they would say in Split, ah, yeah. <laughs> right um, yeah. All right. Um, don't go away, folks. We have got a little bit of a competition, a giveaway. You do not want to miss this. On the other side of the um, commercial break, don't go away. Sales at ozcro.com.au. To you the finest taste of Croatian beer, spirits and wine. Let your taste buds feel the years of nurtured produce and years of experience in producing some of the best beer and wines from Croatia. Established over 10 years ago and importing various wines, spirits and beers from Croatia, we stop the following products. Bosicko Pivo, Staro Cesko and Velebitsko beers, all naturally crafted brews. We carry a wide range of shortcut spirits, which is renowned for top quality and has won numerous awards for its traditionally produced spirits. Some of these include Shliva, Viljamovka, Kaisie, Vishnya, Orakovac and Medovacha. We also have wines ranging from the Ilok region in Slavonia, Belje wines from the Danube region, Malvasia from Istra and the Palichnich brand Plavats Mali and Poship wines from the Dalmatian coast. Our mission is simple, to ensure that quality, unique and reasonably priced Croatian goods can be enjoyed right here in Australia. We also cater for special gift packs for customers, be they birthdays, christenings, weddings, etc. It's easy to order online or you can telephone us to arrange a special package. Visit our website at www.ozcrow.com.au, like our Facebook page Ozcrow Imports, or you can contact us by calling 0419 or email sales at ozcrow.com.au. Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. It's episode seven. Now, Josipe, apparently with everything that's going on around the world at the moment, uh, Dan Murphy's and a few of these other retailers are threatening to pull um, Russian vodka off the shelves of their stores and what you're not. But we are here to save the day. In fact, 
Ozcrow Imports are here to save the day because tonight, mate, we're going to give away one bottle of Shortcuts Shlivovica. One bottle wow. of Shortcuts Shlivovica. We're here to save the day. One, we're... one lucky punter is going to be oh, enjoying God. that. Uh, no, uh, look, get, no doubt, get, no doubt. I can, or you can win it. We can go hard. Nema, no, nema, no. Otherwise, yeah. Lustratia. <laughs> Lustratia. <laughs> For those of you that don't know what that means, look it up. <laughs> We've got a competition, folks. And the first person to put the correct answer in the comments section, um, we're going to YouTube about three Facebook pages. In fact, four Facebook pages. So uh, there's a lot, 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 lot happening here. Um, Josip. You, you do the honours of, of, of this question, okay. the and question I'll keep is, an eye out on the, uh, don't you the keep, glasses Keep an on. eye out because then we'll, we'll, we'll contact the kind Judo Fritzek and um, send in the details of the winner. The question goes, ready what, for it? what was the name of the reserve where Strathmore, previously Glenroy Split, used to play at? All right, what off you the go. The name of the reserve. The name of the reserve. Off you go, folks. Who's going to be the first person? Who's going to put it in the comment section? They're going to get a bottle of Shortcuts Shlivovica. Do we have an answer? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll keep on going. And when we find out who that person is, I'll keep an eye on the comment keep section. An eye on it. Yep. I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll get someone. Here we uh, go. We have got a winner. We Ivan have got Juric. a winner. Ivan Juric, Billy Wojtek Reserve. Um, he looks like he's uh, just recently been celebrating. Uh, the birth of a child. Well, uh, no, that was that was uh, five that was years ago. ago. Yes, five years I do. Ago. I, I have to call out uh, uh, <laughs> that that is my cousin. Is that right? Well, it's yeah. not rigged. That's for sure. It's um, not rigged. Not rigged. But that is my cousin. Yeah. Hi, Ivan. Cheerio and... to Jason Balajinets. Um, he got it right. Tanya Matilda got it right. Tony Chavar yeah. got it right. Marinko Markovic. But got there's it only right. one winner. But there's only, there's only one, one winner, winner, unfortunately, and Ivan Juric happens Evil. to be that winner. Uh, Evil, Evil can... please put it on ice for uh, Christmas Boxing Day celebrations. Yeah, either, either send us uh, a private message or you can email us at communitysportsmedia at gmail.com. That's communitysportsmedia at gmail.com. We will pass your details on to the um, fantastic Jura Fricek, um, uh, who is the director of Ozcro Imports. And um, he will take care of the rest. Um, and now, speaking of, oh, I guess, um, Judo, Judo, he's, uh, he's got, a, 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 I guess, a family connection with our next guest, Mr. Ivan Franic. Ivan, welcome to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. An absolute pleasure to have you on the show. How are you, mate? How's things? Good evening, guys. I'm going well. How are you guys? Very good, very good. Well, and I'm glad we haven't got any audio issues with you the way we had with Santa at the start of the, the interview there. Santa needed to put 20 cents in the machine. It's all right. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Even here, first of all, um, um, thanks for joining us once again. Mate, you, um, we, we, we just um, heard with from Santa, Brendan Santalab. He, he's had a real illustrious um, um, career that's spanning 20 years. We'll get on to your career a little bit later on, but your, your connection with Split, it's not just the fact that you're a former coach, um, but um, there, there's a real family connection with, um, with um, Glenroy Split slash Strathmore Split. Tell us a bit more. Yeah, I think my dad used to play back then in the Industrial League when it started up. So, yeah. And I obviously coach with Rivera Markovic. So, all we need is my brother down there. We'll have the trio. <laughs> Could that happen? Had a time before Joey comes along, is it? Oh, you never know. <laughs> now, mate, um, let's 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 talk about let's talk about let's talk about your time at Split. How did you find the club? I mean, it, obviously having that family connection there, going back to the club, it would have been something quite quite um incredible, I guess. Um, that feeling of of almost you know rediscovering your roots. How did you how did you find the club set up? How did you find the people there? How did you find your time at, at, at Split? Yeah, I had an amazing time down there. Obviously, I was coaching with Rivera Matkovic at the time. Uh, we are doing the coaching together, but it's a great community club. Great boys down there. Every Thursday, you go up in the club rooms and have a drink, have a laugh, have some fun. And then on the weekend, you know, obviously, I'll go watch the boys whenever I can. And, yeah, it's just a great club all around. Obviously, the club's grown from State 4 to State 1 very quickly over the last few years. Yeah. And, obviously, like Steve Pitch was talking before about their facilities and that, they're slowly growing. 
but the club's getting bigger and bigger. And he, obviously, if they want to get MPL, hopefully the cancel can help him. Well, uh, speaking of Stippich, he's just throwing a comment in online there, mate. He said the contract's ready, so uh, you, <laughs> you're right. You're good. What, what for president? <laughs> <laughs> there, there is no one at the moment. The, the spot is vacant, so possibly, possibly. Um, <laughs> now, talking about your junior days, um, now um, we, we spoke about um, uh, your, your dad playing in the early days when it was the Industrial League of split. Uh, mate, you, you played, you first of all started at Meadow, Meadow, Meadow Park Eagles and then you moved your, well, made your way to the Melbourne Knights and, and, and Dinamo. A question I asked um, Brendan, and I'm going to ask you as well. At what point did you realise you wanted to make this fair income, um, this this soccer caper that you wanted to take it seriously? I think as a kid, you always dream that you're going to play for a uh -huh. big club overseas, the team you support, Manchester United. But then obviously as you progress and you grow older and you mature, you see it's a lot of hard work to get to where you want to be. And obviously, like Santa touched on previous, you have a lot of downs before you have ups. Mm. Anyone that can go for a career just up, up, up is, I don't believe it. You know, obviously, you have to fail to succeed. That's just normal. And when you fail a few times, it just makes you stronger mentally and more willing to succeed. So, uh, speaking of the setbacks, I, I think one of your early setbacks in terms of injury was was at your Melbourne Knights days. Uh, so, I, I remember we were trying to woo you at North Geelong in the, around 2008, thereabouts. I <laughs> can <laughs> remember that. Might have, might have happened at a couple one of those Croatian discos or something like that, Boxing Day discos maybe. Well, we, we saw that he was out of action. We thought we could be, we could be the recovery club for him and get, get him back on track. <laughs> No, I remember that. Yeah, I've done my hamstring in the semi-final. I think the last time Knights made the grand final in Victorian Premier League. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go on. No, I was going to say, um, no, with with your career extending over uh, into the A League and, and coming into the Brisbane Raw uh, under the management of Ange Postacoglu, just give us a little bit of insight about Ange's management. We've seen. Uh, how he's ad adopted uh, Celtic and changed their mm. ways. Um, just for the for the uh, the people who haven't really had that insight before, give us a little bit of insight about Ange. Yeah, Ange is uh, he believes in his style of playing his sticks to it, and he never changed for anyone. And the funny thing with Ange, I think the whole time I was there, I spoke to him, maybe had two conversations with him outside of football. He likes to keep his distance from players, mm -hmm. and if he's going to say anything, he says it in front of a whole group. He doesn't uh, pull you aside and smash you. He'll smash in front of the group, which I think all the players rate when you treat every player equally, especially yeah. at that level. And in terms uh, of an influence... Good. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, in terms of an influence on you, and now hearing you having a, a dabble with coaching, uh, has it had an impact on the way you think about the game? Oh, definitely. Obviously, you learn a lot from different coaches, different styles, what works, what doesn't, what you like what you don't like. But obviously, with Ange, it's, you know, I'm a big fan of playing football and he was a coach that believed in playing football and would play no matter what. I think we're very dominant through that three, four-year period in the A-League and you could see why. Yeah. Is, is he, is he, when we talk about a lot of those successful coaches, we always kind of, we, when we talk about the successful players, we seem to go back to the golden generation, to the old school type of player. Um, and a lot of the coaches, um, we heard from Santa how he talked about how um, Branko Chulina had a big, big impression on him. Postacoglu, Edge, um, I mean, he obviously is a product of the old NSL system, the old soccer, which is what we Australian Croatians always refer to as the golden era of football in Australia. Was he, was he, was he an old school type of coach? Was he a progressive type of coach? Was he a new style, new age style of coach or a bit of this, bit of that? How would you describe his, his ultimately, how would you describe his coaching style? I think uh, Ange is a very smart person and he evolves with football. And you could see that, obviously, he coached the under-17 Joeys, South Melbourne, and each time, if you actually watch even now at Celtic, it's evolving every time. And I think that's very important in football because football does evolve and it becomes quicker and quicker, especially with the sports science and that. So he's very up-to-date with that. And, you know, obviously now he's formed a lot of connections overseas, so he'll get inside access to a lot of big clubs' training facilities, especially being at Yokohama. 
mm. who's connected with Manchester City, so he would have been starting Pep Guardiola as well. Yep. As your um, career uh, started to blossom uh, at Raw and A League, you, you got into the grand final. One, I think you were part of two titles, were you? Three. 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 Okay. Three Pete. Yeah. You're yeah. starting to do a David Savinsky on me and start saying how many <laughs> how many championships have you won? <laughs> so three three titles. Uh, in that in that period is when you started to get into the Soccer squad as well, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So um and then you, you, you sort of you, you double up. You had Ange at Raw, then you started getting him in the in the national team as you're building up for the Asian Cup too. Was there a different character that comes in the room at a national level as opposed to the oh, club good level? Good question. Good question. No, he actually didn't double up. Ange went to Victory and then moved from Victory to Socceroos so while also at Brisbane. No, what I meant is like so, you've 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 had the two experiences. One, you've had him at a club level, and then you've yeah. had him at a, at a national level. Um, does he bring the same character at the national level? And did you find that any differences or transition there? No, to be fair, he was pretty much the same. Yeah. You don't speak too much. You have to say hello every morning to him, shake his hand. And if he has something to say in the morning, he'll say it in soccer level. Otherwise, you just go back to your room and when you're ready for training, you see him again. Do you, uh, sorry, Toncha, just on the Asian yeah. Cup on the Asian Cup win, I thought that was a, a, a momentous occasion for Australian football and, and seeing so many um, uh, players on the pitch that I had the pleasure of watching as kids uh, come through and going, well, that's just great to see and particularly coming through an a-league level like yourself um uh, Juric and and many others as well but I, I feel like after that situation a little bit like after 06 um the local level like flattened out it didn't really kick on after those big success stories did you feel the same yourself yeah i did obviously especially like when we won the asian cup all of us returned to the club the next day so it's like it was forgotten pretty quickly, especially in Australian media, where they're more interested in reporting about AFL than they are about mm. soccer. Yeah. So that obviously didn't help at all. Mate, you've um, you've you've had a pretty you know an illustrious career at A League level. You played at Brisbane Raw on two occasions, Melbourne City, Perth Glory, and then um, the last club um, was at Macarthur FC, where where Ante Milicic is coach and and uh, Ivan Jolic as well. Uh, Ex uh, Melbourne boy as well, who's up there as well in an uh, uh, in a, uh, um, assistant capacity. How did you find um, um, Ante? Ante? How did you find his coaching style compared to say Poppers or compared to say Postacoglu's or some of the other coaches that you've had sort of um, um, been under playing under? Oh yeah, Ante was obviously this was his first coaching gig after Matilda's, but first with men's football, he was assistant, so. He's finding his feet. Obviously, will get better as he progresses and gets more experience. But he's he's at the start of his journey. And to be fair, I thought he'd done pretty well that first year in McCarthy. We made finals and we won game off the grand final. So he'd done very well in his first year as uh, head senior men's coach. Yep. And uh, to, the reason to step away from the A-League, was it a situation, this family uh, sentiment, or is it because of the injuries and you felt like maybe you needed to take a step back? Or no, I do think it was the right time, obviously, with COVID and that. It was getting a bit harder. And, you know, my brother Joey always wanted to play with me before I finish up my career. So I thought, well, I've still got something in the legs. I'll try to play a year or two with him, then call it quits for good. Yeah, fair enough. And you're at, at Heidelberg United. Um, not a good start to the season. Two losses. Um, the Greeks there must be must be pretty, uh, you know, it's desperate circling. for their first win. It's they circling. must be. Yeah. Um, how, how are you finding it at Heidelberg United? Obviously, one of the progressive clubs, one of the big uh, powerhouses of the um, Victorian NPL competition. Um, but yeah, two losses from the, the opening two games. Is there a little bit of uneasiness or a little bit of panic starting to set into the dressing room? Oh, it's definitely not a great start, but you know, every time before I signed at Heidelberg and for the last few years, everyone goes Heidelberg starts at round six. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> I'm hoping we can start this weekend, but no, it's not a great start. But that's football, you know, people yeah. start to write you off, and that's when you fly under the radar and you just, you know, prove the doubt is wrong. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Actually, it's good that you mentioned that. You like, put 
uh, the doubt is wrong. Um, you know, we were talking to Santa before about how he's had knockbacks and trying to overcome those hurdles. Uh, is there somewhere you go mentally or spiritually when you feel those comments come your way uh, along the journey throughout your whole entire professional career? Is there somewhere you like to switch on and say, get that out and I can move along? I think early on your, in your career, it affects you a bit when you see something on social media or something. But as you mature for your career, you, like, don't want to say this in a bad way, but you just don't care anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can have a hundred positive comments, one negative comment, and that one negative comment will affect you. But as you mature, yeah. you just block it all out and just, you have a laugh, like you joke with the boys in the change rooms about it or something. So I think as you mature, it's definitely yeah. something that you just brush to the yeah. side. Actually, you mentioned a comment there, like you do one one bad thing, everyone remembers it, but you, they forget about the good things. I was actually reading today on social media something about Jelko Jurin, um, ex-Sydney Croatia player, and he, he a big game against Sydney Olympic where he ended up back passing and he thought it was his own teammate. He ended up back passing. So this is in the halcyon days, obviously, of the NSL. And um, and Sydney Olympic ended up uh, chipping in and scoring a goal. And <laughs> Every time someone would bring it up, um, uh, apparently he's, he's left us, unfortunately, um, left this world, unfortunately. But Jelko used to get really, really angry because of that very thing that people used to kind of forget he scored all these wonderful goals and was responsible for these memorable moments, but they seem to remember that one bad thing. But um, it, it, this is, I guess, part and parcel of, of being a professional footballer. And as you say, you get the ups, you get the downs, you just have to live with the downs and celebrate the ups as much as you can. No, definitely. Obviously, you know, being a defender, I always protect the defenders. Strikers can miss 10 chances a game. No one remembers. Yeah. You make one mistake and everyone remembers that one mistake. But you could have been 4 nil up at the upper end. Were you always a, a defender? Were you always a fullback, Go, particularly in your younger years? No, I was a, actually a midfielder. I don't think anyone grows up wanting to be a fullback, <laughs> if we're honest. But How no, did that happen not. and why did that happen? When, when did you actually transition to a defensive kind of a position when i signed at melbourne knights i started pre-season and i had a bad uh i got a bad tackle and done my ankle and then when i came back they put me right back being young and i think i scored a goal and assist that game and just stayed there ever since <laughs> yeah, there's something about that right back position Toncho. i've done it to players over the years too i don't, I don't know what it is you bring a player back through right back and next thing you know they're working their way up the pitch anyway so yeah <laughs> It's like Absolutely. a remediation position. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it certainly seems that way. Ivan, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we really, really look forward to uh, just uh, watching you, um, you know, this year at Heidelberg. Um, and, and then we, we, we eagerly await your return back to Strathnava Reserve as a future president of, of the club. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Good, Good idea, idea the best for the year. Uh, we'll... Catch Hopefully around. catch up with you again, yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Good on you. See you guys. Uh, that was Ivan right. Franic from uh, Ex Socceroo Star. Uh, that was that was just another uh, really interesting conversation. I hope um, our viewers really enjoy listening to some of these um, 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 people that we're getting. They're all Australian Croatians. They're all products of our community. Um, and um, these today we've had Brendan Santa Lab twenty year career. Um, Ivan Franic, who's got right up to the Socceroos. Next week, mate, we're talking about the young guns. We're talking about two yeah. young boys, teenagers from, from, from our hometown, Geelong, who have ended up coming, um, going to Croatia in the, um, in the hope of hitting it big. Um, I cannot wait personally um, for that episode. Luka Skorko, who is now at second division club NK Dugopolje, and Nikolas Voladovic, who is now with uh, Primorac Dobrec um, on the other side of Split as well, um, former North Geelong Warrior players. What can we expect from them? Because, mate, you've been quite involved in their, in their development. Uh, look, not directly involved, but obviously uh, as a former TD and the coaching staff there in the juniors at, at North and even in senior land, um, you, w w when you are in the senior uh, environment, you do look at the juniors who are coming through and you, you start to flag where 
where the opportunities will lie for us in the years to come. And uh, seeing the two lads prosper and, and grow uh, from strength to strength, uh, it's a, it, 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 I'm, I'm delighted that they're going to be joining us to share their, their views and their news as well. Um, yeah. But I think one thing that's starting to come out in these conversations, Tonch, be, that, be it someone like Michael Bullich who was on last week, you know, what is he, 19 that years of age? That was a great interview. Great interview. This week with Santa and, and Frenya, you, you got to really grasp onto that message about the mental strength mm -hmm. and the mental resilience, you know, and how we how we need to ensure that we um, we do a better job in the way we communicate and treat each other as as in in, in a humanity sense, but even in our football land and. and Make sure that we uh, nurture the talent through. I'm not talking about cotton wool or you know all yeah. these sort of you know a medal for everybody that crosses the, the finish line. No, sometimes you've got to be tough. You got to you got to teach them to toughen up. Yeah, yeah, but but encourage them to 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 get through that battle and not you know that's comments like Frana and Santa shared today. Like you know you get the naysayers at you constantly biting. Yeah, at you, you know you shit, you're terrible. What la la. You know, um, we 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 as a community too. Uh, need to stand better shoulder to shoulder in pr in protecting those comments from being uh, thrown over the fence. Absolutely. Uh, if you have, folks, missed out on any of the interviews that we've had, and we've had some absolute doozies from Josip Šimunić to uh, Ivan Kelava at Melbourne Victory, uh, Marko Bulic, a youngster, uh, making it at the uh, Melbourne Victory last week, and obviously the lads today. Um, some very, very interesting um, interviews and what you're not – Look, join, subscribe actually to our YouTube channel, um, our Ozcrow Soccer Show YouTube channel. Everything is there. You can see it from episode one all the way to episode seven tonight. Um, and also consider becoming a member as well of the um, um, uh, the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Very easy for as little as $25 a month. There's the um, address at the bottom of the page. We've only got two gold VIP members and a big, big, big shout out to Vladimir Zetovic, Melbourne boy, who for some reason happens to be up in Sydney today, and Marko Maric as well. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much. But come on, we've got such a big community in Australia. We need more members. www.patreon.com forward slash Ozcrow Soccer Show. Um, we have promised that once we get to about five gold VIP members, those members will be getting something that everyone else is not getting. Um, so do, do consider joining up. Josip, that brings us to the end of our show. What a show it has been. Gee, this is the longest, longest show, hour and 41, 42 minutes. Yeah. A lot happening um, over the next seven days. I look forward to next week's show. And a big, big shout out to everyone involved um, with um, Strathmore Split and especially to Josip, who does the Facebook page out there um, um, for uh, enabling, enabling our show to be live streamed also on the Split um, Facebook page. So big shout out to everyone there at Split. Yeah, thank you very much to Strathmore Split, to our, to our guest, Ivan Franic, and uh, looking forward to next week's episode already. Good night, Josipe. Good night. Good night, folks. You have been tuning in to the Ozcrow Soccer Show, which was tonight proudly presented by Ozcrow Imports. Good night. Good night. Thank you.